this is the final chapter. So uh, basically, we, we, we are at the sad, sad end of this. Um, so yeah, um, right. Um, we've used the data before. I think we all recognize it because it's the climbing data and the Airbnb data. Um, so, right, is that gonna, is that gonna work? Oh, there we go. Okay, so yeah, uh, the goals for this are we've utilized individual level predictors to better understand the trends among individuals within groups. Um, how can we also utilize group level predictors to better understand the trends among groups themselves? And also what happens when we have more than one grouping variable? Um, so, I mean, basically you can still do plenty of modeling whether you read this chapter or not, um, but yeah, it, it's okay, it's quite short. Um, right, so yeah, the group level predictors, uh, we're using the Airbnb data. So with this data, it's the 1,561 listings and there are 43 Chicago neighborhoods, uh, basically. So that's um, our first uh, group level predictor. Uh, um, I apologize, I couldn't um, get it to fit on the screen. There's something that I don't understand about the sizing uh, on there. So apologies about that. But this is basically the price of all the rooms, it's, it's, it's very skewed. Um, this is the actual raw data. Um, so it goes between, I think about $10 and $1,000. Uh, uh, and uh, we do, I can't actually um, uh, show you on this, but we do actually transform it, we log transform it. So it's more symmetrical. Uh, and yeah, then we're, uh, using some individual level predictors here. This is the price with the number of bedrooms uh, on there. So I presume that's like a studio one, two, three, four, and so on there. Uh, and this is the ratings, uh, and again with the log price. And that's the type of uh, room there. So it's shared room, private room, uh, entire apartment. Um, and this is the neighborhoods, basically. This is the 44 neighborhoods. Okay, so to this end, we can build a hierarchical model of Airbnb prices by listing the number of bedrooms, uh, the rating uh, and the room type while accounting for the neighborhood grouping structure. Uh, given this uh, symmetric continuous nature of the log prices, the log prices aren't so skewed, uh, will implement a normal hierarchical regression model. Um, when you do that, it takes absolutely ages to do, uh, which is why I can't put it in, in there. I don't know whether it's, it's not really more data than we've used before or my computer's really slow or something like that, but it was taking a long time to, to load. So I thought um, I would uh, not put the actual code in there, but it's in the book, obviously. Yeah, I think it's because like you have like, uh, let's come them like you have basically like, um, well, like I, I don't remember, but you had like four more parameters uh, than the previous model. Yeah. So it's four more parameters plus the previous model times the neighborhood. So I don't I don't remember how many parameters it must be, but it's it's probably a lot. I guess it's long. It's long. Yeah, I, I was running it, and it's like, has it broken? Um, and it's, um, I think it's just being slow. Um, but yeah, so basically this is the posterior predictive check that we've seen before. Um, the one on the right is using the uh, actual data and uh, the one on the left is using the log transformed. And obviously it's a much better predictive model if we use the log price, basically. Okay, so 19.1.2 uh, incorporating group level predictors. So we are features of the broader neighborhoods themselves uh, for such as ratings for walkability and access to public transport. Those are on a zero to 100 scales. Um, these features are shared by each listing in the neighborhood. So for example, all listings in Albany Park have a walk score of 87 and a transit score of 62. Um, right, okay. So to simulate uh, the posteriors of our hierarchical model, uh, we need uh, only uh, plunk the group level walk score predictor directly in the Stan uh, Glimmer formula. Uh, 
since all listings in the same neighbourhood share the same walk score, it is automatically recognised as a group level predictor, which I didn't know at all. But basically, if you just put it in, it should recognise its group level predictor. So that didn't seem too difficult, I don't know. Uh, right. Okay. So with the exception of the intercept terms, the posterior med uh, median models are nearly in indistinguishable. This makes sense, including the group level walkability predictor in Airbnb model two, essentially replaces the original uh, global intercept uh, in model one without tweaking the individual level uh, predictors. We can also interpret um, model two's posterior medicine, sorry, median uh, coefficients as usual, both listings uh, and neighborhood level, while being mindful of the log scale of the price response variable. For example, when controlling for the uh, other model predictors, uh, the typical log price for a shared room is roughly uh, 1.06 less uh, than that for an entire private home. More meaningfully, the typical price for a shared room is roughly one third of that for an entire private home. Further, for every 10 extra points in a neighbourhood's walkability rating, we expect the typical price of listings in that neighbourhood to increase by roughly 18%. So obviously people are prepared to pay uh, for stuff that's probably near the centre and they can walk to it basically. Uh, right, okay. So posterior group level analysis. Um, so there's an observation about uh, group level predictors. Including a group level predictor tends to increase our certainty about between group trends, so how groups differ from one another, while not improving our certainty about within group trends, how individual observations within the uh, same group differ from one another. Um, so it does have limitations, basically. Uh, right. And the model we're considering uh, here just scratches the surface. We can go deeper by uh, connecting it to other themes we've considered throughout units three and four. To name a few, we can incorporate more than one group level predictor. Uh, group level individual level predictors might interact uh, and group level predictors uh, might help us better understand um, group specific slopes or aggression parameters, not just uh, group specific intercepts. Okay, so this is where we move on to uh, some uh, other data. So this is the, uh, the climbing data that I think we've seen before. Um, okay, so uh, last week we used the climbing data to model the success of a mountain climber in summiting a peak by their age and use of oxygen. So I think it was, if they were using oxygen, they're much more likely to get to the top and also it helped if they weren't really old uh, as, as well. Okay. In doing so, we were mindful of the fact that the climbers were grouped into different expeditions. The success of one climber in an ex exhibition um, being directly tied to the success of others. Uh, for example, five climbers participated in uh, the expedition there. Uh, right. Okay. But that's not all. If you look more closely, you'll notice another grouping factor in the data, the mountain peak being uh, summited. For example, our data set includes 27 different expeditions with a total of 210 different climbers that set out to summit uh, the Amma Deblam peak uh, on there. Altogether, the uh, climbers data set includes information about 2,076 individual climbers grouped together in 200 uh, expeditions to 46 different peaks. Uh, obviously, that would be rather um, difficult to uh, uh, visualize. So they've done a relatively simple one here. So uh, the top level is the peak and then uh, each expedition going to the peak and then the climbers on the bottom basically. So uh, these groups are nested. The data uh, consists of climbers within expeditions uh, and expeditions within peaks. That is a given climber does not set out on every expedition nor does a given expedition set out to uh, summit every peak. Uh, so that figure there captures the simplified version of this nested structure in pictures, assuming only two climbers within each of the six expeditions and two expeditions within each of uh, three peaks. So if they did an actual real one with all of the data, 
it would be huge, basically. Uh, right. So simulated models with two grouping variables, um, just as we shouldn't ignore the fact that the climbers are grouped by expedition, we sh uh, shouldn't ignore the fact that expeditions are grouped by uh, the peak that they try to summit. After all, due to different elevation, steepness, etc., some peaks are easier to summit than others. Uh, the success of expeditions that pursue the same peak are inherently related. Um, obviously, it's going to be easier to climb your local hill uh, than go to Nepal and climb up Everest. So that's quite difficult, I hear. Not that I've ever done that, so I can't really comment on it, but um, yeah. Um, okay, so at the easy end of the climbing spectrum, three of the 46 sample peaks had a success rate of one. All the sample climbers that set out uh, for those three peaks were successful. At the tougher end, 20 peaks had a success rate of zero. None of the climbers set out uh, for those peaks. And, you know, they, they weren't successful. Right. Okay. So we can combine this global peak specific and expedition specific information to model the success rates for three different uh, groups of climbers. In cases where the group's expedition or destination peak failed, sort of falls outside of the observed groups in our climbs data, the corresponding tweak is uh, set to zero, uh, i.e. in the face of the unknown, we assume average behavior for the new expeditional peak. Uh, so basically, it will use the data uh, where it has it, but if it's the same climbers trying something new, um, the previous peak information uh, and expedition information won't affect it, uh, basically. Okay, so the two grouping uh, structures that we're considering here, uh, just scratch the surface, we can expand on the theme. For example, we might have more than two grouping variables. Uh, we might incorporate these grouping variables for group level slopes or aggression parameters, uh, not just group level intercepts. Uh, and our grouping variables might have a crossed or non-nested structure in which grouping variable one might occur with multiple different levels, grouping variable two unlike the expedition teams which pursue one, not multiple peaks. And that's about it, but I think that's what they're gonna put in their next book, basically. Well, but, yeah, cool. but it was quite a short chapter anyway, to be honest. Yeah, no, no, it's good, it's good. Uh, uh, I have read it, uh, the chapter, so I think you have done a good job like summarizing it. I think like, <clears throat> What I will just add is of what I I have read is like uh, I I feel it's a bit strange when you read the model uh, and then you read the equation. The equation is quite simple. I mean, in the formula, mm. and then you read the model is like oh, it's complicated. And then it's just at the plus, and uh, the model figure it them the software figure it in themselves. So I was quite yeah. of surprise, but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't write the model because it's helped you after understanding what kind of parameter you should uh, put and how they interact with each other what you said like with the um, climbers that have gone to climb uh, easy peak or climbers that um, that do not have uh, information about some peaks or something like that so i think like mm. this is just that i stuff that i could add i don't know if other other yeah but yeah um i i also felt like it it flat a bit like the i don't know what you said that but like i would have expected them to provide some references to follow up or uh, like you know uh okay but yeah there, there was there's something in there about those two books which they recommended but they said that they weren't bayesian yeah, I have yeah. I have seen them. Uh, the the German book, which I'm surprised that it's not Belgian, and the uh, other one I don't remember. Um, let's, let's check. Yeah, yeah, at the end, Leg, 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 and Yeah, uh, and then yeah. at the end they say, uh, uh, "Go forth and do Belgian things." Yeah. But uh, I mean, uh, why not? I don't know. I have like. Um, I have, I have just checked them. Like, I'm surprised the book of German is not Belgian, but uh, yeah, it's it's still using like multi-level and hierarchical model. It's probably not free, by the way. 
checking the the print. <laughs> nice. But uh, yes, so yeah, I still feel like they should have like uh, 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 just on the perspective, like uh, I, I like uh, some conclusion, you know, um, on the book. Yeah, there's, so there's... I will provide mine if you do not uh, bother. Yeah. Um, mine is just like what I have enjoyed with this book, and I think what it teach me and what they should uh, do it in their conclusion. I think is like I like the way like you are building uh, from a small bad model. Let's say just for example your your uh, response data with an out predictors. Then you just try to predict it like with priors and and. Um, and uh, post and priors and datas. Then you ramp up with adding predictors. Uh, then you can play a bit with the predictors, like either uh, adding it to like um, a, a parallel slope model or just like taking into account like various uh, the effects of slope or intercepts. I mean, the not the and stuff like that. And then you add more predictors or you have the grouping level. I like the, um, the this workflow, even if it's could be a bit frustrating because a lot of time, like you have a lot of uh, predictors and you want to go maybe too fast into the analysis. I think this book helped me like taking a bit of, um, I don't know, how uh, to say that, but like, yeah, start slowly and build up the model and build up while building the model, building the understanding. I, sh I think it should have been um, a good conclusion because it's also highlight the idea like uh, of updating in the Bayesian uh, world. So, but yeah, this, this was my, uh, one of the tech uh, I have, except of learning a bunch of other stuff um, with it, with this book, obviously like the book covers a lot of more stuff that I have said, but uh, yes, the, um, just the workflow of uh, doing the analysis uh, was important and it could have been a good conclusion to summarize the book i i feel i don't know what's what's your text yeah well i did like the book uh what i think i'm going to do over the next few weeks i'm not going to jump into uh, another book immediately i think i want to find some data and just like not data that's in there basically not data that's in the book because one of the problems with the data that's put in a book is it kind of gives you the right answer um i want to find some data that gives me the wrong answer and how can i find out about the problems in it and how can i get around them basically so i think i wanted to give that a go uh, i i totally agree with you i think i will do some exercise also i have started like redoing it uh but yeah doing doing like some trying it on a data set that I know and um, yeah I think it's good advice what what uh Lisa what's your take yeah it's 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 calling um, people <laughs> yeah I know I know it's very not friend and like that you're not friend so um <laughs> I I I'm glad to I guess at least to be updated I was not like Super invested. I apologize, but like I'm glad to 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 sort of learn from all of you. Um, sort of explaining the chapters in addition to rereading it. Um, but I was gonna say I I don't have any immediate applications for it at work. So I I yeah, it's possible I might just forget it. It was just like me sort of prepping in case there was a need for it at work. I guess yeah. So. But so, so this was good enough for me to do that. So at least I know, oh, if I want to do this, I can go back to this chapter and then try it. <laughs> okay, great. Uh, Federica, your take? Or oh, maybe Lisa can call her, so it's not me. <laughs> it's calling people. <laughs> uh, can, you, can you hear me? Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah, um, I like the chapter, the the uh, the, the chapter, but uh, in the, the book in general, and I think it's uh, going to be useful uh, because there's a lot of uh, practical examples with um, 
uh, data with some data that you can apply to other data, maybe, and to verify the answers and see if you can make it better, as Will said. And um, um, I'm going to um, go back to this book in the future, near future. Uh, for now, I need to like think about that and um, see if I can uh, apply some some to the the, the the things that I found interesting on some other things as well. Yeah. I agree with you. Yeah, I agree with you about the conclusion because uh, it could be nice to have like a summary of the, the things and say um, uh, maybe what can be next, what uh, the authors uh, experiences uh, during this book, some, some, some like uh, personal experiences and uh, conclusion on summaries about the Yeah, where was it? I think it was, was it chapter 10. Hold on. Yeah, I, I thought evaluating regression models was a really good chapter. Because um, I mean, I've done non uh, Bayesian regression before. Um, but to be honest, I couldn't really, I didn't really know how to compare regression models. I mean, you know, they are kind of squared and stuff like that. Um, but I think that's, that's going to be actually really quite useful for me um, in being able to um, yeah, I think I'm going to be a better modeler with the ability to compare different models, basically. <clears throat> I had a my list. Federica, you can call someone. Uh, <laughs> what? It again? Someone, I don't give someone, I don't speak it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't understand. Okay, Brendan, what is your take on the, the book and uh, what will you do next? Um... Yeah, I don't know if I have a take home, but I did appreciate this. I feel like going into any given research article, I'm a bit more confident in being able to um, understand the output if it's a um, Bayesian analysis. Also in my field of like more cognitive modeling, hierarchical Bayesian models are quite common. So. Um, this last section was particularly beneficial. Um, honestly, I'm also left with more questions and answers. Like, I think one thing after this book is um, to do more research on um, how to decide what priors to use. I would say that's one of my bigger questions because in all of the examples, they use uninformed yeah. priors pretty much, yeah. right? Um, yeah. That's the whole advantage of Bayesian analysis, right? That and, you know, quantifying parameter uncertainty. So that's definitely on my to-do list. Um, so if there's another um, book club that talks about that more, then I'm down for it. I think it comes to one of the criticisms of uh, Bayesian statistics by Frequentis is that um, they will say um, the priors have this excessive influence over, over the end result because you, you put in a load of prior data um, and that will influence what comes out the other end. Um, I think in reality that doesn't happen too much because usually I think it's like this and we have relatively uninformative priors. Uh, but that's certainly one of the criticisms of Bayesian statistics. Yeah, for sure. Um, I don't know. I've Well, I like the idea that in Bayesian stats, you just make it explicit what your prior is. I feel like, you know, frequentness or any researcher ends up doing it maybe just at a more implicit level and not quantifying it. Um, as a prior in their model. So, but yeah, obviously the Bayesian versus frequentist stats wars aren't going to end anytime soon. No, but like, uh, yeah, but well, that's good. Thanks for everyone uh, for sharing that. Uh, on the <clears throat> prior stuff, uh, I do not know if there is a book, but I think there is research uh, because it's a part of a research field of eliciting experts. You know, like uh, you can, uh, I, know, I know there's publication about that, like where uh, when you are a statistician, you are trying to, let's say like, for example, um, in, in the health, 
health uh, industry or whatever, it's like you have a doctor that have a lot of knowledge, a lot of prior knowledge, and uh, there is research on how to ask them question to uh, help you set up good priors. So I do not know if there is like, I will, I will search because I, I know it exists, but I have never like um, investigated more, but I, I know it, it, it exists at the research level and people are publishing it on, let's say like, how do you ask good question to experts in a way that helps you setting up your models and the prior in your model. It exists, but I, I can't give you like, um, I will check it and maybe provide links later. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, definitely. Um, that's also like, I don't know if you will join us a book club uh, in the Air Force Data Science communities. I know Freder Federica is already on some of them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, the, G the GOS is uh, in an interesting uh, book as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We are doing very badly. <clears throat> Uh, I, you know, I've updated all my system to a new version of R and everything oh. starting this portal oh. and everything. So, I'm uh, supposed to be able to install Inla. Yeah. Uh, but no. So, uh, I'm happy to, to have the chance to go and use the, the server, the R Studio server. Because yeah, it, I will it do that. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, I, uh, I use that. Okay, perfect. Good. Okay, yeah, because like uh, we are, um, we started another book club with Federica on uh, INLA, the um, Integrated Nested Laplace Approximation, which is another way of uh, doing Bayesian stats uh, for a hierarchical model without uh, Markov Chef Monte Carlo. It uses approximation uh, from multivariate Gaussian. Uh, I do not understand everything about it. Like I understand very small, <laughs> small amount about it, but uh, it's, a, it's it's and it doesn't generate the whole distribution. It just gives you the marginal um, value of posteriors. Not so. It's another uh, concept that's work mostly on on particular cases, but uh, that's it. So yeah, we are working on that. Yeah, that that. Yeah, that's interesting because you can uh, it's applied to uh, on uh, Earth data, and uh, it's basically doing spatial modeling. So it takes consideration of autocorrelation of the data. Uh, that that that's something that is quite interesting to to see. Um, because you know when when you uh, so it, it's interesting to, to 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 understand a bit better. How it... Yeah, to to give a bit more of background, usually spatial or temporal data are autocorrelated, and usually this autocorrelation uh, is perceived negatively. Uh, and here it's the reverse; they use it uh, to put assumption in the model that help them uh, get. Um, <clears throat> Uh, quicker uh, simulation with the um, or approximation. Okay, so yes, um, but um, as a Rick, um, so uh, I, I hope like uh, soon or more. I mean, because like if you check on the Air for Data Science community, you have less uh, book club on stats. I will say more of them are um, on um, R general R use, which is normal because like you have more R users than necessarily stat users. But I hope I can see all of you um, in some uh, next one, uh, if, if we found a good one. Well, I, I... It, it, isn't it just amazing that we can find people um, through this through this system who are also interested in this? Because if we kind of like went into town or something, there would be no one interested in, you know, in, in the town. And we, we've got two universities in Bath. I mean, you know, there might be one or two there, but you know, I, I, I doubt most first first years during their freshers week will be too worried by Bayesian statistics. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, it's it's great. So yeah, I will maybe write a small blog post uh, about it and what I have learned uh, from you, uh, not necessarily from the book, but as a facilitators and what I think I should have done better. Because <laughs> obviously, not everything was perfect. I mean, I, that like, 
Uh, it was my first time, so um, I fell on a lot of stuff. But um, and I, I have seen other facilitators that do better job of, of me, like on other stuff. So, uh, oh, you did a great process. job. What are you talking about? Yeah, <laughs> you know, you can always improve. Let's say, like, uh, let's let's uh, change that for the American mentality. The French one, we said, oh, I was shitty. It was awful. <laughs> but the American said, oh, I see plenty of challenge. <laughs> you, 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 you should write an article to impart your knowledge to everyone else uh, mm -hmm. so, so that they can learn from your excellent facilitating yes. um, capabilities. I need, to, I need to improve on that too, but yeah. So yeah, I will write something about that uh, because uh, I think it should be advertised and more people should join. Because I think like you have a lot of people who are trying to learn by themselves and uh, we'll be happy to share with others. So we need to reach out. <laughs> For sure. Oh, do you have a blog? Um, I'll check it out. Or yeah, Twitter. yeah, yeah I, please I share the link. <laughs> I will put the link, but um, I will write that on the chat. So yes, well, thanks all of you. I mean, maybe you have other stuff to add, so feel free to do. We have still a bit of time, yeah. Well, I was just thinking, if I'd brought if I brought this book off Amazon, would I have really got to the end? Would I have done the 19 weeks? Probably not, really. I'd have yeah, done a few I, chapters. I, I would have skipped some chapters, I think, too. Yeah, and it was good to not skip them. Uh, I think uh, there's people who want to do the effect. I don't know if you know this book. It's more like um, it's. I will. I will show you the link um, in the Zoom chat. If I uh, let me go, it's it's frequentist, but it's um, it a very very good review. It's also like a beginner friendly. I will say it's very well written. Uh, I will. I will uh, it uses obviously uh, bootstrapping, like you know, like the kind of uh, frequentist approach, I will say. Uh, let me share. Where is it? Uh, in the chat. So there are people who are like um, <clears throat> who want to do it. Uh, this book. So I don't know when it will start, but this could be like uh, an interesting, um, interesting um, <clears throat> web of like. Plugging it. It's focused a lot of causal inference, uh, which is trendy you now uh, in the economic sphere. <clears throat> I mean, in the scientific sphere, but like no one is uh, agree with what it means. And I do not pretend to know the truth <laughs> on that issue. But uh, this book has very good review. Uh, it's also a win few prize. And um, um, how can I say? Uh, it's also in R, Python, and Stata. So you can pick your language, uh, which is good. So I do not know if I have said it well, but I will. I will I'm in two book club now. Uh, I do not know if I will go on third, but I could see myself on this one. <laughs> two, two, yeah, three. I think holler if you join this one. Um, I, yeah, I probably could always go and <laughs> remind myself what the account economists are we discovering from other disciplines so <laughs> yeah it, it, it's it's well written i have like browsed it and uh, it's enjoyable the example and stuff like that so it's uh it's less uh because like the i feel like bias who was very like they take you very by the hand you know like <laughs> literally uh, make you the step which i think was good for me uh but uh this one a bit less but um yeah i will let you decide and maybe post it in the book club uh request uh maybe a bit later not now that's it that was so good It's also introduced something important that I feel like it's more like the research design and sampling design, which was not necessarily the case in a lot of book. And this is a trend in data science. I feel like you get the data, but you don't know and you do not design how you get the data, which is different like in research, right? Obviously you have like a research design. 
or an experimental design, or even if you are doing up using observation. But yeah, <clears throat> that's it. <laughs> Sorry, what were the other two book clubs you said you were in, or the other book club? Uh, so I'm in the uh, book club um, about uh, geo health data. It's a lot of epidemiology, but uh, it wasn't that epidemiology that interested me. Uh, it's with uh, our in law uh, book club. Uh, I will, I will uh, geo health. Uh, so it's not on the screen of, uh, well, Will is not, uh, we, we still see your screen, Will. I can. <laughs> um, but uh, so yeah. it's uh, our in uh, Geo House. The name is Geo House. Uh, we are very few. Uh, it's difficult. It's very difficult. I'm not doing a good job at facilitating it. Uh, I feel like I've done a, a very good uh, presentation of spatial data with R, like it was two weeks ago, I think. Um, but um, yeah, the book. Club is, is a bit uh, the the book is a bit hard. I will can post you the link if you are interested. Um, I do not think I mean it covers a lot of topics. That's why I pick I picked it uh, because it also covers shiny and using Mardom. So it do like the whole, like modeling communicating uh, with them, but it's maybe too much. I don't know. I think um, maybe more focus uh, geo else. And the other one is a package. The package um, book club okay. from like the air package from Wickham and Brian and Jen, which is it, it's a very good uh, book. I totally recommend uh, it. It's very um, it's it's well designed. Okay, cool. The yeah. I, Like you can check, like just the chapter three was super dry about explaining it, and um, it was very hard, like uh, doing it with just just it. But we will have a lot of example, so I hope we'll do better. One okay. of the things that, that's great about the geospatial stuff is it has lovely, pretty pictures. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but the, this is the we love a good part map. of it. You know, we are kind of trapped. The, the whole industry is trapped at doing beautiful stuff, but not explaining. So it's kind mm. of, uh, you know, we need to mature, like from going outside of just doing good map and explaining what's behind the process uh, behind it. But it's true, we do, we do, we do good at mapping. And now we have, we have even like, uh, the new trend is using a uh, game engine, uh, like um, Unreal Engine. I don't remember the other one to do like real mapping, but uh, with the um, I mean three D mapping, but with like the game engine. So you basically build um, a copy of the cities, let's say, and you can move around like in the game. So this is the new trend in the industry. So mm. we are still doing better stuff, shiny stuff, but. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Right. So guys, I think we're good. I, I mean, except if you. And I would be happy to see you in the Air for Data Science communities. Other communities, like there are plenty of uh, other learning communities. Like I like the Air Open Science also. Uh, I'm not hugely participating, but I, I like what they do. Oh well, right. yeah, you, you you've all been great. So uh, I I would love to do another book club with you. All. It's been great. Sure. Uh, I mean, if you have like suggestion, feel free to uh, to share. I'm still I, I still feel for me I could do like redo the for example the Mac LRS one like re rethinking statistics, especially now that uh, this book helped me a lot. Uh, this is another option. Uh, it will do uh, probably a new course on January. Uh, it's a bit hard because it usually do two chapters per week, which uh, can be a bit hard, like one chapter, like depend on the time you have, but I feel like two chapters is basically one full time uh, day, which not necessarily everyone has. Um, I'm too, it's too early for me for doing um, the um, German book like uh, Bayesian Data Analysis 3. I think uh, I'm not enough good enough in my mathematics department to do it. 
maybe I could see myself doing like the regression and other story. The Ross, the, the book is um, nickname is Ross. I never uh, Ross regression and other stories. I think it's doable at my level. Maybe I'm overestimating myself a bit. Um, but yeah, this is the option. Like we could consider and doing it. I think Eric also wanted to jump in another one. Uh, so feel free like to share it on the air for data science. I I I will go with the effect also. That's it. Okay, great. Yeah, it was great seeing everyone. Hopefully we'll touch base again. Yeah, yeah. sure. Bye. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks a lot, everyone. Bye. Bye. And congrats.